Oh, crunch. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, she's so high. America. Oh. I wanna fall all over her. Oh, everyone. What's up? Doesn't sound quite as good in my accent, does it? As it does in the original American. Let's have a look. What is going on? Hello. Hello, Max Lang. Cheers. Oh, cheers back to you. Oh, rascal. Cheers, ears. Cheers, ears. Let's do this. Think of her. What have we got here? She's so high. A lot of requests. You want me to change it? There you go. Is that better? I take requests. Let's have a look what we got here. Oh, this is just me, the worst DJ nice of all time. All I want to play is Tracy Chapman. Oh, here we go. Oh, doesn't the world feel better now? You get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. Maybe we can make a plan. To... Hello! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Everything in the world, fleetingly, oh, feels amazing. Sam Mewis. What's it up? Oh, what's up? It's so good to hear your voice, to see you. Oh, America, welcome to the Wednesday Budweiser Happy Hour on Instagram Live with me, Donald Rog. Oh, this series began when Budweiser wanted to encourage people to check in with each other, so check in we will. Oh, uh, with a bud. I, my first, oh, my first third bud <laughs> of the day with Sam Mewis. Look at this. This I've, I've got to say, oh, you are one of my favourite American footballers, a tenacious uh, tower of power who enforces her will upon opponents. Seeing you define matches almost single-handedly, winning everything, World <laughs> Cups, back-to-back -back NWSL Championship, with your passing, your tackling, the way you smite the ball. With the fury of a thousand suns, I raise my bird to the pride of Hanson Mass. Oh, and the North Carolina courage. Sam Mewis, cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Rog. Thanks for oh. having me. Oh, Sam Mewis. There's few people I would rather happy hour it up with than you. How are you holding up in Raleigh, North Carolina? Are you someone who in lockdown life can self-organize, create activities, entertain yourself? Or are you just like full on cabin fever? Uh, I, I think somewhere in the middle. We're doing okay. So I'm here with Lynn Williams, my roommate, who I know you love. I do love Lynn Williams. She is the best Williams since Roy, North Carolina. <laughs> she is the best. Uh, my husband's down here too, and we actually just got a puppy named Finn. So America! Been keeping us busy. Um, but we're, I mean, we're doing all right. We're training. Um, we're starting to get back into like a little bit of um, like more organized training this week. Um, and hoping that things start to progress from there. So we're doing okay. So it's just the three of you training now, you, Lynn Williams, and Finn. Is it just exactly. like a very tight cluster? Can we get some little update? We are going to talk a little bit about Finn, but puppy life. Puppies, not just for quarantine, it's for Christmas or whatever that saying is. How are you adopting to <laughs> Finn's presence in the home? It's been good. The first couple of weeks was tough sleep-wise. Um, he would get up at two and four and six and have to pee. But he's doing a lot better now. It's one of us still has to get up early to let him out. Um, <laughs> but we actually, I, the good thing is that I, I tend to be like a, a real warrior and I'm thinking so far in the future, but having Finn, like he just wants to play. So I'll just sit down and play with him. And it makes me be so much more present. So it's like actually really helping. You make Finn sound like Emily Sonnet in canine form. <laughs> 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 We're not going to go there. I also wonder what television have you been immersing yourself in to grind yeah, uh, through time? We've been watching Community. Oh, what? Great choice. 
Yeah, it's a good show. Have you watched it? I, I mean, it's probably, arguably, the best comedy of early 2010s. Like my contribution to the U.S. <laughs> men's national team, it's, it's incredibly <laughs> underrated. I am such an abed. Who do you relate to? Because I am an abed. Who's the... When oh, you you're abed. It? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Rog, full on abed. There's mm. a bit of abed in all of us. Who are you, though, Sam? I'm probably, honestly, Annie. Wow, yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm way more high strung than uh, you might know. <laughs> I've got to tell you, that is a surprise to me because I have you down as a full on Shirley, just like the, oh. one who, the, the one who gets everything done and will take you down if it's necessary. Oh, well, I'll take that. Yes. I'll God, <laughs> I've got to tell you, I, I, I revere Shirley, says Rog Abed. I know you're back in training. You've talked about Lynn. Uh, I'm interested in your mental focus a lot of the German players who've just returned to the Bundesliga that we've talked to, they've talked about how mentally hard the process of pause is as an elite athlete. You know, there's a lot of talk about coming back and maybe the league will come back in this fashion, maybe in that fashion. And the German players all talked about how mentally tough it was to stay focused with the uncertainty of the league. It is back. Please, God, NWSL will be back in our lives. I don't need to remind you, you, the mighty North Carolina Courage, the best named team in American sports, <laughs> are back-to-back -back champions. What is your mental goal right now? Are you thinking about defending the title or just getting back to action? Yeah, uh, like you said, I mean, the uncertainty of this whole thing has been challenging for us, like it probably has been for everybody in the world. Um, but I, what I miss the most is just playing with my teammates. I, so... I haven't thought so much about getting back to like a normal season and defending the title. It's more that I just want to be out there running around and sharing the ball and passing and talking and high-fiving. And um, I think that that's what I miss the most right now in our training sessions. You can kind of see another group down the other end of the field doing the same workout as you. And it's even just the difference in that and being able to yell down to someone and be like, good job running. Um, well, you, you can just see you can, you, you can just see Dal Kemper in the distance, exactly. in, in the misty fog of North Carolina. Yep. yep, and we're just cheering each other on from afar. But it's <sighs> it brings so much more energy to the session. So the thought of like being back with the full team, training, yeah. competing—that's really what I miss I mean, the most. I can see it in your eyes, Sam. <laughs> that is just, it's such a wonderful thing, and every young player who's watching is no doubt feeling the same. They've had the ball at their feet. They've been in their backyard. They're training, training. You just, as an elite athlete, you just miss the camaraderie, the togetherness yep. of the locker room. Exactly. I, I feel like, especially here with the courage, our sense of team is so strong. Um, and that, so I, I, when I don't have it, it, it's, I had this feeling when I was injured for a while, when I was away from the team, you just feel kind of like alone and kind of like looking for connection. Welcome to um, my life, Sam Mewis. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know there's so many people out there who must be feeling the same way and even worse. So I'm, yeah. I'm very lucky to have this little family here with me. But um, I really just miss the team a lot and can't wait to I'll be back doing the same stuff together. I love that. I mean, for an elite athlete like you, life without competition must be must be like me with hair. I mean, by the way, we talked about this when, when we chatted ahead of this call. You are also a Premier League fan. We should touch upon this. Which team, Sam Mewis and why? Say well, it loud, I, say it proud. I will. I, I like Man City. Um, I'm a big Kevin De Bruyne fan, and I just love the way Pep coaches. And I know all wow. English people are probably like, obviously she likes Man City because they're good right now. Um, but I will also just add that Paul Riley, my North Carolina coach, is a big Liverpool fan. Yes, he is. He tends to treat us a little bit better when Liverpool wins. So <laughs> you'll find me not being that upset when Liverpool wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Paul <laughs> Riley is a remarkable man and a proper scouter. Pep, obviously, they call him the, the Catalan Vlatko. But it's KDB that you revere, that you look at of all the players in the Premier League, you know, box to box, his, his, his attack mindedness. Is that what you look at that and think about your own game? Yeah, well, I I would love to think that about my own game. I know uh, he's just one of the best players in the world. And I think... Uh, his presence on the field, his ability to change the game in the attack, but also kind of play box to box, depending on the game. 
Uh, I look at his like assists, his his placement, his power. Oh. He's just like such a force. So I, uh, when I watch him play, I try to take some notes and I would try to emulate him as best I could. He might be a ways away, but I mean, he's an avant. He he is an avant garde thinker. The way he sees space, uses he's space, manipulates space. He is a genius. And I will say, when you think KDB and you think Sam Mewis, I think of you both. You know, there's a quality in both of your careers that you've both had hard knocks in moments. It's not been a, you know, a straight surge to glory. Both of you have experienced glory, but you've both had moments. Him at Chelsea when he spat out without, you know, I interviewed him. He did not, he still doesn't understand why under Mourinho it did not work for him at Chelsea. He questioned his whole identity as a footballer. You've had moments in your own career where you've also said, you know, what am I doing here? Who am I? Well, really, where am I going? What can I be? Both of you have answered that question by stepping up, going next level in your response. But there is a tenacity to both of you, which is humanly admirable. Well, thanks. I, being compared to him in any way is a huge compliment. But yeah, I think um, something like that, I, I think about not making the Olympics in 2016 and how I kind of had to double down on what I was doing and really recommit myself to the game and to the kind of player I wanted to be. Uh, and then I think about when I got injured at the end of 2017 and had this knee injury that really made me question yeah. a lot and if I could come back and be as good as I was before or better um but I think that moments like that like a, moments of adversity are an opportunity to come back even stronger to learn a lot you know it sounds cliche but um I definitely think that those those hard times were the are the reason I made this, this past World Cup team and was able to play and win I say it all the more over the past seven weeks of pandemic life, and you are living proof of that. You know, times of trouble, those are the moments that define you. And I absolutely mean it. You are more like KDB than I am like Pep. Even I, I, actually, I actually said that to Pep once. I, I said to Pep, I was like, you and I are proof that two men can like have similar qualities, but be so incredibly different. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, let's dive into the shadow realm of viewers' questions. We had so many for you. You are so beloved. Sam Mewis, at Babin JM. Sam Mewis, you won a World... This is a beautiful question. You won a World Cup with the entire nation watching. Do you wake up and sometimes believe it's not true and then realise it is and just marvel at your winner's medal? Wow. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, now that it's happened, I it's true. And, like, nobody's ever going to make me think it's not true. Um, but I think that when it happened, I, I totally all the time was like, is this really happening? Did we really just win? Um, it's, it's like totally one of the most unbelievable dream come true things that could ever happen to me. And when I think back on like the history of the U S women's national team, and I imagine myself as like a, a small part of that, I'm like, wow, like it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, you are, to be candid, a much larger part, and I can see you're willing to admit, a golfer, a golfing legend, Nick Faldo, once told me that he he won the Open uh, in Britain for the first time, and he loved to go to bed with the claret jug tucked in the sheets beside him, and he'd wake up and, and feel like, oh, I just had the greatest dream that I won the <laughs> British Open, and then he'd see the trophy right by him in the bed and be like, oh my God, and he'd feel the joy all over again. Do you like yeah. feel, do you relive that or is it just like in your past and as an elite competitor, you're on to the next? Yeah, I, I mean, I think part of me is okay with reliving it. Like moments like this when I get to talk about it and I think that like my joy still really shines through. Anytime someone brings it up, I'm like, oh my God, it was the best. Um, and so just moments like this, reliving it is so much fun. But I just so recently saw on The Last Dance, Phil Jackson's quote, he said something like success uh, is, is only, only happens in the moment that it happens. And so kind of as soon as we won, we got to go out and do some drinking, we got to celebrate a little bit, we got to kind of enjoy it. But then so immediately, it's like, okay, I'm back I'm in the NWSL, I want to win again, I want to make the Olympics. And you can't revel in it for too long or it would interrupt what you want to do next. And so I hope someday at the end of my career, I can relive the whole thing and just... It's true. Well, just watch all, watch all of Ashlyn Harris's stories. <laughs> at Rage Talk Soccer, can you ask Sam? I can Rage Talk Soccer. Ask Sam, what, is awesome. what was she feeling at the exact moment when a French journalist asked her and Tobin Heath at a press conference before the quarterfinal if you could please just lose to France. 
what 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 goes through your mind? I mean, that question. Yeah. By the way, the French journalist question much better than any I'm about to ask you. So I don't want to crap on other journalists. But what what, what goes through your mind in those well, moments? Yeah, in that moment, being in a press conference, like my goal was to not make any headlines. I was like, just say nice things, <laughs> say passive things. If we get a hard question, Tobin's gonna answer it. So. We got that question and I just looked at Tobin and waited because I wasn't about to say anything because it's a it's a headline prompting question. Yeah, uh, it is. And so it's, now just... a, it's now a great meme on uh, on Twitter, your face when you kind of go. Yeah, that, that's my that's my go to. In that moment, I was like, Tobin, this one's on you. No, oh. I'm not interested. <laughs> it was completely discombobulating to have the French ask someone else to surrender for a change. But I, um, I, I found it inspirational watching you win in France. I know I wasn't alone. I mean, you, you individual, I know it's a team game and you're going to deflect. But you singular, someone who had missed out on the 2015 victory, you're an alternate for that squad. You then stepped up, beat injury, overcame doubt, grabbed the squad place, and then in tournament define yourself as a key starter you know one of the first names we grew to look for on the team sheet a tenacious hero to thousands and thousands of young girls and boys across america along the way when you were a kid which players did you look up to and try and emulate yeah i when i was young uh and even still i mean i really admired mia ham um oh. my sister and i always used to want to be number nine we used to watch uh, the, we used to tape the US Women's National Team games on VHS and we'd rewind and we'd rewatch all her goals. And we talked about this the other day, but there was this music video. I don't know if you got to look it up, this music video of this I boy did. band with, yeah. with Mia Hamm. And we used to just like watch it all the time. It was like so creepy of us. I mean, he, you, you were six back then, right? Well, when they won. Yeah. When they won in 99, I was six or seven. Yeah. So this was you. You were a center forward back then. Yeah. Brad Guzan, I once interviewed him. He told me he was once a centre forward too. And he just kept getting pushed further yeah. and further, <laughs> further back. He got pushed much further back than you, thank God. So th I did try and find this Mia Ham and boy band kind of song that used to be yeah. everywhere. I couldn't find it anywhere. I've genuinely had every single producer I worked with have spent the day trying to find this bloody thing. What Do you remember any of the song and how it went? No, I'll have to, I should ask my sister, but it was, I, they just played it at halftime of this game and we used to just rewatch the game all the time. Oh. Um, I, I don't know, it was wild, but we, we, we watched the 99 final so many times on replay that the, <laughs> I like memorized the commentary and I know exactly what he says God. leading through the PKs. Oh my God, this is your youth was watching the 99 final. Yeah. You became a great footballer. Mine was watching Trading Places and Diner on VHS. I love where that got me. By the way, I want to find out what this song was. It's like a life goal. If any of you are watching, I, out, I bet you, there's people, you. There's, yes, there's people watching who know what this song was. Mia Ham, boy band, because my life goal is to get you, Sonny, and Rose Lavelle to re record it. It's called an homage, people. At random <laughs> US WNT tweeted, who's one current veteran player that you've learned a lot from? Uh, Carly, for sure. I think uh, when I first came on the team, Carly was super welcoming and kind of took me under her wing a little bit. And we've maintained a good friendship. And what I really admire about Carly is her work ethic and how she's not afraid of showing and telling everyone, this is what I want. I'm going to work hard to get it. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I want to be the best. And I think we all ha can learn from that in just that that wanting of something and being so forthright and proud of of wanting it um and she just has that drive she has that like motivation she's never gonna quit she's never gonna slack off and she's just been so good for so long even totally when i was a kid I, I was watching her when i was a kid and she's still so good it's, i've it's got incredible. to tell you carly i imagine interviewing Alex Morgan's kid, when she's playing for the U.S. women's national team, and she'll talk about Carly in the same way. She'll be like, Carly really has taken me under my wing with the U.S. women. <laughs> yeah. She's 64. She's yep. still grinding. People yep. are all saying that she should step aside, yep. but she's still going to be bringing it. I hope so. Oh, she'll she'll outplay us all, is my hope. At Royals and Jazz, great question. Sam, you've already accomplished so much. I love how at Royals and Jazz you put into brackets so we all know. 
She's won World Cup and multiple NWSL championships, exclamation marks. Don't forget the college titles. What goals are you getting for the, what goals are you setting for the future? And what are you looking forward to in your career? It's a great question. You've achieved so much. Like how, what now, what now, what now? Yeah, I, well, this Olympics thing still seems to just be a little far out of my grasp. I, I, I thought I came close in 2016 as an alternate um, and I, my big goal for the, the next year or so is to make that roster. Um, it's just such a small roster. The team is so competitive and it, it's so hard to make an 18 person roster. So uh, that's been on my mind really ever since 2016. Um, and then also just, I, I want to get back to playing. Um, it, it'll be so fun. I hope my NWSL team can get back together this year. Uh, and I would love for us to defend our title eventually if uh, we have a season. Oh, you and I both dream of Olympic, <laughs> adding Olympic gold to our accolades. Emily Catherine wants to know, Sam Mewis, what Harry Potter house would you want to be in? And which house do you actually think you'd be in? I wow, love sophisticated. That. I love that distinction because I obviously <laughs> want to be in Gryffindor. Um, but after some intense conversations with Becky Sauerbrunn, I think yeah, I'm in she decides. her. You're in Ravenclaw, Ravenclaw, where they put the smart, creative kids. But the honest truth is, in addition to just being smart and creative, which you are, I mean, to me, you take zero craps and you are so determined and tenacious. I've got to say, I would, I, I, I would put you in Gryffindor with the cool kids in oh, every regard. I'll take it. Thank I, you. I, I mean, also, Becky, I decide, Becky being... decides these things. I don't. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what she said? No, 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 no! I don't want to. I don't want to start beef with Becky. I just said Becky decides these. I don't. I didn't ask Becky that question. Oh. Becky has. Becky has decided I'm total Hufflepuff, which is, <laughs> which is basically a whole house of Everton fans. But go yeah, on. Hufflepuff is a is a noble house, unlike what many some people might think. Oh, I love you. You should be a diplomat on behalf of America, a noble ambassador Maybe. when you're done. Which is a great segue into the next question. At the re Untamer, Sam, if you weren't playing professional soccer, what would you be doing? What job would Sam Lewis have? Uh, I, it's so hard. I think that if I, for some reason, hadn't been able to keep playing soccer, I would have had to become a coach because I can't imagine who I am away from the game and I can't imagine not Amazing. being part of a team. Um, I don't know if I want to be a coach after this because I... I just don't know yet. I have no idea what I want to do. But I think if along the way playing hadn't been an option, I would have said, okay, I got to figure out a way to stay involved. I love you. Your love of the game genuinely emanates just through even this Instagram live, which for all Facebook's investment is a bit <laughs> crap. But like everyone watching this can just feel your love of the game emanates. It just well, lifts every single human being up. It's just brought me like almost all of my like greatest joys i mean of course getting married was a great joy and sharing things with my family has been a great joy but when i think about like the the purest happiness that i know it's on the grass with the sun with my friends playing oh. competing it's just so oh. fun sam today is 25 years to the day since my football team everton last won the title this instagram <laughs> live is not about me and i said to my wife this morning i was like what the hell have i been cheering for for 25 bloody years and she just looked at me without having to think. She said, even feeling desperation, defeat, and doom, those are feelings that have made you feel the most alive. And I love that. And I love yeah. that in you. Football, a very different yeah. experience. It's yours about glory, winning, and <laughs> all of those things. Mine not. But my God, thank you, football. Ton of dog questions because of Finn. You're magical, Cavapoo. How is Finn? We talked about how he's holding up to lockdown life. At Ms. Evade, if Finn was a soccer player, what position? Would he play and could he beat Lindsay Harans Ferguson in a one-on-one? -on -one? I love Oof. people who are trying to create dog beat. Yeah, I know, right? Well, uh, Ferguson, I think, is a little bit older. Uh, maybe a little bit more, like, meaty and strong. French actually, bulldog. Yeah, exactly. And I just gave Finn a bath today. He's seven pounds. <laughs> but when he's wet, he literally looks like a rat. And I don't think he has much meat on his bones to compete with Ferguson. So I'm going to give that one to Ferguson. But I think he'd probably be a forward, a striker. He's got that little bit of sass, that little bit of you never know what he's going to do. Is he going to oh. sleep through the night? Is he going to poop on the floor? 
Nobody knows. You just, by the way, you've just described Jamie Vardy. Is he going <laughs> to sleep in the night? Is he going to poop on the floor? <laughs> Nobody knows. Ah, Angel Hanon says, Sam, would you rather be the size of Finn for 24 hours or Finn be the size of you for 24 hours? Boom. I think I would rather be the size of Finn for 24 hours so we could play around and not oh, cause too much destruction. A giant heart. Finn, a six-foot Finn, we would make a mess. Oh, mate, full-on cliff with the big red dog made <laughs> real. I think that would be the cutest <laughs> thing of all time. At Gabs DV. Great question. I love this. If you could obtain a skill from a teammate, soccer or otherwise, which one would it be? Why? Break it down. On the field, a skill. Off the field, a skill. What do you aspire to? This is a question about coveting. Coveting is good, people. Let's cover it together. Come on. A skill. On the field and then off it. Okay. On the field, rows, skills in general. Just Maradona, nutmeg, step over, twinkle toes. <sighs> but at the same out. time, great with power, with, she's attacking, she's scoring. I think that yep. just little bit of like finesse. Um, I feel like I'm a lot more of like a bulldozer that I'm just going to say, okay, if I'm going, I'm just going to power through. And her little bit of finesse is, I really look up to that. Oh, Off the it. field? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I immediately think of Becky and I think I would just take like a little bit of her composure and ability to diffuse and just her compass points north and everybody knows it. And I, I love that about her. Oh, Becky Sauerbrunn, the people's Cheers. captain. She's yeah. amazing, amazing, she really amazing, <laughs> amazing. President Becky Sauerbrunn, God love. Um, by the way, for those asking, because I know you want me to answer that, oh, I'd like to have Brad Guzan's hair and Lindsay Horan's passing range. We now descend into the truth madness. One thing I've learned about doing this for the past couple of pandemic weeks, the true madness of NWSL fans. I take my hat off to all of you, and I love all of you in just... I've grown so fond of you. I've, I've realised over the past couple of weeks, you all love nothing more than thinking about your players, NWSL stars, and bar fights. So you're ready for this, Samuel. <laughs> We're going in. That Angel Hanom says, Sam, you're sitting in jail as you do. You get one phone call. What national teammate are you choosing and why? To be sitting with me? No, to be, but you, you're going to get bailed out. You've watched oh. television shows. They say you've got one call, Mewis. Yep. And you, who are you dialing to solve the problem, to make the problem go away? Kelly. Kelly would barge in. She would <laughs> demand that they let me out. She would make the whole situation turn into somebody else's fault. She would take me home and she would say, Sam, don't even worry about it. It's over. It's all taken care of. They were wrong. And it would, and it would be over. She oh. would just have my back. Kelly O'Hara, she's the fix-up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she's she's gonna she's gonna fix it. Yeah. She's like the she's wolf. gonna demand. She's like the wolf in Quentin Tarantino movies. She can just make the bodies go away. At Bagel S. Pride, the person who asked the old classic, which we're of course building up to, Sam Mewis. Which U.S. women's national team teammates would you pick to back you up in a bar fight? Three of them. Who would they be, and why? Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Kelly's on it. To to uh, Georgia girls. Sonnet is just Sonnet's just charging in with fists and asking questions later. That's exactly what I was going to say. You took the words right out of my mouth. She's just loyal, and if it's if I need her, she's not asking. Sonnet is just like like on a barbecue. It's just like flinging extra fire sauce. <laughs> 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 Who's the um, third? And then I, you know, I feel like we need like some size in there. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm gonna who go might that be? I'm gonna go with Trusty Lynn. I think Lynn could throw some hands, and Lynn, Lynn would have my back. She'd have Lynn, my back. Lynn Williams throwing hands is just the name of one of the great debut folk albums of all time. <laughs> Lynn Williams throwing hands. <laughs> I do. We're getting to a certain point, and I'm asking these questions for a reason. It's always the point here, and you can insert past Insta Lives, which I've gone off on. Becky Sauerbrunn would be my choice. She is just, she brings peace. She just genuinely. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Have, have Becky, for, send Becky to Israel, Palestine. Send Becky to any fault line in the world. She just heals crap. However, here's the question, and the reason I'm going through this whole rigmarole again. 
every single person I've asked this stupid question. It's amazing. So I've asked it like 87 times over the past couple of weeks. Everyone's first answer. And at Hal's 517 wants to know, how does Sam Mewis feel about being the first name that everyone else gives to assist in bar fights? Because you are. They always say Sam Mewis. Always. Thank God. I feel like that's the persona I've been trying to put off and nobody's been picking it up. And now I know that maybe they have been picking it up. I'm Kelly, Kelly, Sonny, I think Carly too. They all said you. I think they all said you first round draft pick. Do you have any ideas as to why they pick you? Can you enlighten us? Uh, well, I'm six feet. So I think that's a big, uh, I can throw my weight around. You and I me think, both. Yeah. And then I think too, you know, uh, maybe if I have a couple drinks, I don't do it often, but I'm just going to, you know, go for it. I feel like that was a warning to Rod. <laughs> so I'm going to move on as we wrap up with the most beautiful last set of questions. We've been asking everyone, Mount Rushmore is going to be carved properly. Properly. Yeah. No men this time. Just the four most legendary U.S. women's footballers of all, all time. Whose faces would you carve on it? Who should be up there? U.S. The, yeah. U.S. players. Yeah, women. Okay. Of all time. Yeah, the, the greats in your all mind. Right. Mia, who I've already said, childhood hero, incredible goal scorer, superstar. <sighs> Michelle yeah. Akers. Looked up to her so much. She was just like a boss, center mid, aerial presence, an absolute warrior. I read her book growing up. Huge fan. Uh, I've always idolized her a lot. Um, I'm going to go with Oh, I don't know if I should go past present. I'm going to go with Carly. Oh. Already talked about her. She's been good for so long. She's just, I, she scored a hat trick in a World Cup final. Nobody's ever going to do that again. She might. She might. <laughs> she just, by the way, I get, I, I get a sense Carly's just getting started. Yeah. In Carly's I, mind. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. And then I'm going to go with, you know what? I'm 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 debating. I don't know. I'm gonna pick Lil, Heyo, or Pino. Sonnet. Sonnet is <laughs> was next. Sonnet was absolutely next. You know, it's your Mount Rushmore. You carve it however you want. Sammy, I you are such an inspiration. You really are. US alternate in 2015, turned starter 2019, playing, defining, shaping in the big moments, in the big games. You were always there for assists, making a World Cup real, a dream which you've had since you were a tiny kid. I mean, you are so remarkable. A kid who, by the way, sacrificed so much. Your family. God, let me, let me just toast your family. They sacrifice so much. One of the things I'd like to do when I'm through with this pandemic is come up and just shake your folks' hands. They sacrifice so much, work so hard to support you and your sister and make your footballing dreams come true. What would you say is the lesson you've learned, the quality which has empowered you on this journey, a journey to glory? That's the second to last question. Lesson I've learned. Well, I, I think it's just that you can't do it alone, that, that your team is, is what carries you, uh, and your team can be your family, your team can be your actual team, I think. <sighs> It was just so prevalent in, in the, the Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary that we all just watched, that Michael Jordan was so great, but he couldn't have won all those without all, all those teammates that made such a difference. Um, and I just really think it, it's so prevalent on both my teams. I'm on the national team and the courage that you're nothing without your team. And all those people that are going to support you uh, are really what's going to carry you through. Oh, I feel like raising my beer to Luke Longley <laughs> and Steve Kerr, who broke my heart throughout that whole show. Last question for you. Lots of people caught up in the struggle right now. Really, really, really. All we're trying to do is be a tiny fleeting light in the darkness as you all out there in America are grappling with, with, with remarkable human struggle. So Samuel, you are an inspiration. You really are. I'm going to cede the floor to you. Give us some words of optimism of what you draw strength from in challenging times. Yeah, I think... Um... I, w I would just want to say to people that like, obviously we're all missing sports because I think that sports bring us together in such a positive way. It's in triumph and it's in teamwork. Um, 
but and right now this feels so different because we're being brought together through this struggle uh and it, it's a little bit harder to accept and i think that people who are feeling scared or sad right now they're not alone uh and that this struggle is ultimately what's going to allow us to grow and to learn the most uh it's an opportunity for all of us and so i think about what we can do during this time and i think um can you help someone who is struggling more than you can you learn something new or create or take the rest that you need or prepare for this new way that the world is going to be uh i want people to see this struggle as an opportunity and uh, a chance for us to build something that's even stronger um and to just feel united in this struggle and in this process that we're all in Oh, Sam, I've got to say, you are someone who has defined themselves in a time of struggle, who have stepped out, asked themselves, who am I really, and showing the world who you really are in a glorious fashion. I find that deeply inspirational. Listen to you. I've got to say, I've loved every single second of this past half hour. I do raise my butt in joy and tribute to you, to your family, to your dog, oh, to Finn, <laughs> to Lynn Williams, who I genuinely oh, do to adore, yeah. to life, to love to your North Carolina courage. Thank you. We'll Thanks, be back. Raj. Oh, cheers. Next <laughs> cheers. Wednesday on Instagram Live for some more NWSL action. Until then, Bud fam, Blood fam. Oh, courage. America. <laughs> Thanks, Raj. Thank you, Sam. You're amazing. Uh, have a good one. <laughs> that was great. I had a blast. <laughs>